Hello, hello, class. This is Brian, um, Dr. Powers. I'm going to go over the practice final exam. This is the new and improved final exam practice for this term, um, for this uh, summer 2018 term. So there's 28 problems. I'm going to be doing it in four uh, blocks of seven problems each and um, and I uh, hope that you find it very useful I'm I've done this but I did this for past terms and it was very popular so we're just gonna go through everything I'm gonna show you how to do stuff in stat crunch as much as possible um, and so uh, let's get started a concrete mix is designed to withstand 3,000 pounds of per square inch of pressure. The following data represents the strength of nine randomly selected casts in PSI. Okay, there's your data. Calculate mean, median, and mode. Okay, well, let's do that. Let's open the data in StatCrunch. And I'm going to, under the Stat menu, under Summary Stats, for Column, I'm going to select VAR1. That's my column of data. And down here, I'm going to select the mean, scroll down and click on control button or shift click, control click if you don't have, um, and then mode is the very last one, mean, median, and mode compute. And there's my statistics. Um, the Actually, let's see, if, no, I'll just copy and paste. 3680 is my mean. The median 3820 and the mode 4080. Okie doke. Let's go on. Next problem. Compute the range and sample standard deviation for strength of the concrete in PSI. All right. Well, let's open this in StatCrunch and let's get those stats. Same process, but we just want to choose different stats to get summary stats, column var1 and we're doing standard deviation and scroll down let's get ooh, where ooh, i passed it the range right there build compute it okay standard deviation i'll well let's just do the range let's do it in order 1090 for the range for the standard deviation uh one decimal place 474.2 rounds up to 474.3 474.3 okay great determine whether the random variable is discrete or continuous in each case state the possible values of the random variable okay for the first one the number of customers arriving at a bank the number of means is discrete because it's counted okay it can be whole numbers it's counted it's not measured so it's discrete and is it possible values zero one two three yep that's it the square footage is measured square footage of a house is continuous because it's measured not counted so it's continuous the possible values any positive area is technically possible although it's probably bigger than something some minimum house size but it has to be a positive number okay that's it. Random variables continuous. The length of human pregnancies are normally distributed with a mean 266 days and standard deviation of 16 days. All right. The following figure represents, let's, let's zoom in a little bit. Oh, that's cool. I can make it bigger, 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 bigger. Okay. I'll do that for the other one too. <laughs> the um, the following figure represents a normal curve mean of 266 days. Okay, sorry. Um, the area to the right of x is 300 is 0 0.0168. Interpretation, okay, that can be interpreted as a proportion or a probability. It's either the proportion of pregnancies that are 300 days or more. Okay, so that's the first one. It's the proportion of human pregnancies that are more than 300 days is 0 0.06168 and also it could be a, a, 
a probability for a single um, a single random pregnancy that it's going to last 300 days or more. So the probability a randomly selected human pregnancy lasts more than 300 is more than 0 0.0168. Cool. The following figure, okay, we have mean, blah, blah, blah. So it's, again, proportion, but it's 280 to 305. So it's a proportion of pregnancies that are uh, between 208 and 305, and that's the number, it's the proportion is 0.1834. And the second interpretation is the probability that a human a human pregnancy <laughs> lasts between 280 and 305, 0.1834. Okay. Assume a random variable X is normally distributed with a mean of 50, standard deviation of 7, calculate probability. Well, let's do this in stat crunch. Let's get the, the probability calculator, stat calculator. Do, 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 normal is, where is it? Normal. Okie dokie. Got it here. The mean is 50. Standard deviation was what? Seven. Cool. The probability that we're doing X greater than 35. So let's turn that to greater than and put in a 35 click compute here's our picture our probability is down here four decimal places 0 0.9839 we're going to copy that um, I'll paste that in first and let's just control V it okay <laughs> and I want to match this picture well it looks like this one 35 is less than the mean of 50 and it's the the right part greater than is shaded so it's the the right everything to the right of 35 okay now the mean and this standard deviation of x bar so this is the a sampling distribution question related to the, the central limit theorem so central limit theorem tells you if you have a the mean of the population is 81 the sample mean will also have a mean of 81 that doesn't change but the standard deviation is 28, the mean is going to be uh, the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. They're giving you some nice numbers here. I'm going to pull up a calculator just for argument's sake. It's going to be 28 divided by the square root of 49 putting in parentheses so that it makes sure to not square root the whole thing. So 28 divided by the square root of 49, which if you do the math, it's going to be four. Yeah. I mean, you may have even known that before I did it. I just wanted to do the calculator just for argument's sake. Okay. Now again, a sampling distribution problem. P hat, the sample proportion. Okay. We have a large population, 30,000 people. Um, choose the phrase that best describes the shape. Well, p hat, technically speaking, the sample proportion follows a binomial distribution, which we didn't cover in this class. But for a, a pretty large sample size, you're going to see the um, the distribution is going to be approximately normal. How big? Well, it has. You need to have n times p times one minus p has to be greater than or equal to ten. Where's my calculator? Um, so let's um, calculator. Okay, so n four hundred times p point eighty times one minus p one minus point eighty sixty four. That's greater than or equal to ten. Also, is it less than five percent of the population? Well, what is point oh five times? A population size of 30,000, 1,500. Yes. So it has to be less than 5% of the population, but we have to have greater than or equal to 10 for that um, that calculation. It just means you need you, it, the sample size needs to be big enough that you that you that uh, considering that the proportion has to be big enough. So like if if p was small or really big then you may need a larger sample size in order to meet that criterion. But um, anyway, the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat is always p. It's 0 
Standard deviation, however, follows a formula, which I'm going to pull up the, the calculator for. And the, the formula is, it's going to be P, 0.8 times 1 minus P, divided by the sample size, 400. Now I'm going to evaluate that. This isn't the whole thing. Okay. I have to take a square root after that. Okay. So it, it's the square root of this formula I just did. Square root of P times 1 minus P divided by N. Square root of all that. So 0 0.02. Okay. 